Hey everyone, what's the crack? Lawrence here with the long-awaited P1000 pedals. I've done the P2000 pedals, you guys absolutely love those. Massive hype around these. I've got a ton of accessories as well. Let's do this. Right, so where to begin? Okay, um, we'll go for the pedals first. I do have a lot of accessories here. Let me just talk you guys through the accessories that I have. I have a little um, kind of RGB bar here. I also have, uh, I think this one goes on the pedal footrest itself. It's the Keep Racing Symagic branded also RGB bar. So that's those two. Simray power supply. I think that is the power supply for both of those. So we'll look at that in just a moment. But these things are ones that you guys are all massively interested in. These are the Symagic haptic feedback uh, motors that sit onto the back of the pedals to give you those ABS feelings and stuff. Through the Symagic software, through the pedals, these are probably the most exciting part about this. If the pedals are good as well, then this is gonna be a solid buy. I reviewed the Sim 3D pedal rumble motors um, probably about a year ago, maybe two years ago even now at this stage, and people went absolutely wild for them. I think that Simmagic has drawn some inspiration from products like that. These are, these are beefy rumble motors. These are like halfway between the size of those motors and like butt kickers. So these are, pretty beefy, pretty serious. So we'll install those afterwards. I will be putting them on straight away because people will be interested about how they feel. Um, I will, of course, during my long-term review, be taking those off as well and just figuring out are they, are they worth it, are they not worth it? If they're any good, I can already tell you that they're worth it. The things that are gonna make it um, really pop are the Symagic software, software compatibility. So let's get this big box out here. Uh, this is a three pedal set um, and it comes in below the P2000 in pricing. Um, so we've got some cool packaging here, some next level immersion. Nice, nice box. Uh, class leading performance, drive it, feel the realism. So they're really kind of, they're going for that feeling aspect of it. Some foam in here and we've got our typical Simagic warranty card and they've actually included an iRacing voucher. So the first one of you who doesn't have iRacing, see this voucher up on the screen? You can claim it, it'll give you three months of free iRacing. So how about that? Thank you, you can thank Simagic for that. When you do claim that, if anybody does claim it, please put it in the comments below that you have claimed it so that others don't go to the effort. Uh, that's your little warranty card. Uh, of course, as always, your consumer rights do apply, but it is worth keeping on, hanging on to that warranty card. This is almost like a door card. It's a sticker. Um, it's almost like a door card that you can stick, you know, to the, the back of your seat or whatever. It's quite nice. I think that's probably what they've meant is for people to put that on the back of their seat. Uh, it's black. It blends in with most fiberglass seats. Uh, that's another really cool sticker. Let's see what, it, there's, there's a lot of stuff in here and there's a lot of weight in here. So let's see what we can get out of here. Um, we've got a box that wants to fall out. So this is our um, nuts and bolts and stuff. So we can see very clearly packaged. Worry about that in a moment. We've got a quick start guide here. So it shows uh, installation of the pedals and adjustment, all that kind of stuff. So they're getting good at putting these guides uh, in with the products these days. So quite happy about that. Um, let's see, we don't want anything to fall out here. That's our little base plate. So nice little heel rest. It's actually a beautiful finish. This uh, red is a lot darker in person than I thought it was looking at the photos. A really beautiful finish on that. Uh, the Keep Racing slogan. That Keep Racing slogan is quite in your face. Um, I'm not sure if that's for everybody. I don't know, would people just prefer to see a Simagic logo? Uh, is that where their loyalty is rather than with the Keep Racing? Um, the brand is not called Keep Racing, the brand is called Simagic. So should Simagic be the most prominent thing? I don't know, I'm not a marketing guru or anything. Looks like there are magnets in here. That's kind of interesting. Um, oh, maybe that's where the light beams, those RGB beams, maybe they stick to that. I don't know. Well, we will see that. Let's put that off to the side. 
and we've got some more boxes in here. I know I'm, I'm oops. I know I'm opening this box kind of arseways because it's on its side and the camera angles and all that. Uh, we seem to have a lot of these little boxes. Put them off to the side. I don't know exactly what's in them. There's, oh, there are polyurethane rubbers in here. We'll open them all individually in a moment. Get rid of that foam here. And there we go. That's the, yeah, that's the pedal set in there. Let's get that out of the box. Okay. This off to this side. More foam. I'm not the biggest fan of all this foam, but it is great at protecting stuff. And we've got our pedal set here. So interestingly, the base plate comes in two parts uh, and this is all assembled. So there's absolutely no assembly required here. Uh, if we look at these, the, the brakes have two bolts installed and the clutch has one on this side, one on that side. Uh, inside they have the two bolts installed, but the back they only have the one, which is interesting. USB port at the back. This was a big criticism of mine with the P1000 pedals, sorry, the P2000 pedals, uh, that the US, the little control box wasn't a part of the wheel deck. They seem to have listened. Uh, so that's there. There's a little, uh, oh, that is a little, um, oh yeah, that's for the power. So the power goes in there. And we've got everything already hooked up in here. Uh, throttle brake, uh, brake clutch. Where are two brakes? Interesting, there are two brakes here. Maybe someone can explain that to me. Um, but there's only one, obviously, brake pedal. So maybe it has two load cell sensors in it. I don't know. Let's try and trace those, see where they come from. Yeah, it looks like there are two wires going to the brake. So I can only guess that there are two sensors in there. Um, as always on this channel, I don't get too bogged down in those technicalities. I think they're interesting. Um, and if there are issues with the product, maybe I can narrow it down to the technical reason for it. But I mainly go on how a product feels, not necessarily how it works, um, as much as that interests me. So there's a little sticker on here. Uh, Do not hot swap Simray. Okay, so that's, it's, it's already, it's set up for the Simray pedals and stuff. There's a little connector here as well. So something connects to that. Let's get the other part of this base plate here and let's see how this all connects up together. So I'd say some of the things in those boxes are probably like little bars that connect in here. Usually I kind of wing it with products and just try to figure stuff out. Let me open up this, see if they're in here. Okay, there are some bars in here which look more like what we're looking for. So maybe that goes in there. Yeah, that looks like it's a, a good fit in there. So that was a lot more work than I expected just to get this front part on. Four bolts underneath and a not very intuitive mounting process. Um, obviously it saves them a lot of space while they're shipping, uh, but I just, I can't help but wonder if that needs to be exactly like that. Now, one thing that you do get with this is you get immense rigidity. So if you do use these mounting holes 
uh, and you're on a, a rig that's not particularly um, you know, rigid, uh, this does add rigidity, which I'm a big fan of. And that's nice that Simagic have taken that little hit of assembly time to think about something that is a potential issue down the line. Uh, it all looks very well presented. They've really, in my opinion, stepped it up um, from the uh, P2000. Um, the box for this pedal set is actually also a, a lot smaller, uh, which is cool. Um, I've noticed in here, we get some uh, cable clips, T-slot nuts. Looks like we have everything that we need to be able to mount this as well. We've also got different lengths of nuts and bolts. Uh, it looks like they've thought about many, many different um, mounting options. There are some springs that have fallen out here. So those springs are for the clutch by the looks of it. Uh, and speaking of those pedals, let's have a quick look at the back of this here. We've got our uh, throttle has a, a damper on it. Um, I'm guessing that's adjustable here. I'm not gonna adjust it for now. I think our brake is probably adjustable here. And we've got, where have we? This is where the little elastomers are. So these little elastomers, okay, that's not a little elastomer. Oh, there it is. I thought that was a spring there for a second, but you get a lot of these little pads, which is very interesting. That allows a very uh, granular level of refining the braking. So that's very, very interesting. How many are there? There are like eight of these and two of these. Um, so that little elastomer set. So that's definitely, Innovative and it's not the first time we've seen innovation from Simagic and like in the early days Simagic were one of the first products that I ever reviewed on the channel and people were saying oh they're just you know copying lots of different brands but I've seen lots and lots of innovation from Simagic and it's one of the reasons that I'm actually a fan of the products themselves um, is because we're constantly seeing new things we're seeing new innovative uh, and fun things from them. So they're really kind of, and they're concentrating on, you know, drifting as well as track racing, uh, rally. They're, they're concentrating on a lot of different aspects of it. So these are extra brackets for installing on customized frames. So you can uh, install these at the side here if you want, if you can't access from underneath. One thing that I would observe is that this base plate is not height adjustable. We do have height adjustable pedals and the pedals are slightly curved. So, uh, and they're slightly knurled as well. So you get a little bit of a, you get a texture on there, uh, which is nice. And you get these nice beveled aluminium accents that you see all over the place and that we saw on the P2000 as well. Uh, we can see um, hall sensors here. So that's with, with the brake, looks like we have a hall sensor here and probably a load cell in the brake. Again, not sure why we have two of those, but it should hopefully all become clear. As always, I'll be running these in their default configuration at first, but I am curious about these rumble motors. These things, I've gotten so many messages about these things. Um, so let's open up one of these. Got some cable clips, some um, screws, little Allen key as well. I like that they label on the bag what is in the bag, which is very cool. Installation instructions straight away. Take off the pedal face, mount the rumble motor, and you're good to go. So, here we go. This is what the rumble motor looks like. It's a nice looking little device. Little bracket here as well. And the cable was just wrapped up in here. There we go. And that's where the countersunk bolts go into. So, let's get some of these installed. I think it's time for another time lapse.
So that's them all hooked up. Uh, these little rumble motors really do look neat. Look at that. They're on the back here. They're quite large, but they're really nice. Uh, the wiring works quite well. It kind of, I've kind of rooted in through here. There's a little bit more slack on the throttle than there is on the brake. Uh, the one on the brake, you'd barely actually notice it's there. One thing that I really, really, really love here is that they've built in the expectation that people are going to get this upgrade. There are no extra boxes and wires and stuff. This just plugs, look at this. It plugs directly into the base like this. Now that is a well thought out and well designed base plate. If we look at the bottom again, we can see that there's a lot more going on. There's another control box down here. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very impressed uh, that they've taken on board a lot of the um, the little things, the little things that would have annoyed me anyway, they've probably listened to you know everybody about this, uh, but little things like those external control box, uh, they were just little things that could make the product even better. So the fact that they've listened to those things, and these look, they look absolutely stunning. They're a beautiful, beautiful looking pedal set. So let's have a quick look at them beside the P2000s. We can see a lot of the same um, kind of design characteristics with the uh, pedal arms, pedal faces are different. Um, it will be interesting to compare them. Uh, the uh, new pedal faces look really nice. I think they actually look even nicer than the older ones. Uh, we've got a heel rest now, which was one of my criticisms of the P2000s. Uh, we've got a little bit of extra height, which is nice as well. Uh, although these pedals have been raised up as well. Uh, we've got more adjustability in the height of the pedal faces, which is really nice and we've got these rumble motors of course we do miss the hydraulic brake that we get on the p2000s we don't have that here so uh, that's going to be one to watch out for but we've got all the extra bells and whistles uh, that we're going to look at next um, for the p1000 so visually side by side they look like quite different pedal sets i kind it kind of looks like they're on you know on par with one another, if that makes sense. Um, if anything, uh, this just seems more engineered, um, which it probably is. They've had longer for these. They uh, released these quite a long time ago. Maybe they're due a revision, but little things like the ability to, uh, for example, here, you can, you can adjust these pedal faces, the angle of these pedal faces, you can adjust it here. Um, you can't do that with those. And you actually, there are very few pedal sets where you can adjust the angle of the pedal face without having to adjust your pedals completely. So they've thought of a lot of little things like that. Uh, you can adjust the, uh, the throw quite easily. Um, the, you know, I had the issue with the side to side wobble on these pedals. Don't have any of those build quality issues. Now with the later P2000s, they did actually fix that right after my review. So the hydraulic pedal and the, the external elastomer stack or uh, spring stack there is quite nice visually, uh, but this is a lot tidier. And the big one, if we switch them around here, if, or so if we turn them around here, the big one, one of my big criticisms of the P2000s was this, this little external control box. We no longer have that. We don't need to worry about that. We've got a built-in USB port in the base plate um, and that just makes life a lot easier. The clutch clutch mechanism is actually quite similar. They've got that whole, you know, it shoves back and then goes down to simulate that uh, bite point. So there's nothing too radically different there. Um, the brake is quite different. The throttle doesn't have the adjustable damper. I have seen them tease images of that and even a hydraulic brake upgrade for the P1000. So if they have all of those things, I'm not sure what the future of the P2000s is. Uh, maybe the P1000 is going to be their flagship. I really don't know. I have no insider information on that. The next thing to do is get rid of the P2000s because they're not entirely relevant for this video. And let's have a look at some of these other accessories. So other accessories that we have here are the Simagic PSRB, which is a very cool little light, which that looks like the little connector that we have inside underneath. So let's grab this. 
put this upside down and then it looks like the intention is for this to click on there and for that to click on here. So what this does is it gives us a really, really beautiful, seamless, see how quick that was to install, a really seamless LED experience under there. That is an upgrade for these pedals uh, it, and it gives you some light here and some light in through these holes. That's all it does. So, you know, bear that in mind. It's not a massive upgrade, but a lot of people love that. If you think of like the Asetek uh, pedals, they've got that LED strip. A lot of people really love those. I had the SimForge pedals and one of the things I did was mount an LED underneath an LED strip and it came, it, it really showed off that logo, that SimForge logo. So it would be cool to have a Simagic logo here that was lit up with your LED uh, or even if it was, you know, laser cut out of the metal, would be kind of cool to have that. But for now, I, I like the sleek look. I am curious to see if I would pay the money for that extra LED. Uh, I'm not 100% sure right now. And let's grab this here. And this is our upgraded little footrest. So this replaces that. And it does have, does it have a slightly different angle? No, it has the same angle. It's slightly thicker, uh, but I will be installing that as well. So let's give that a quick install. You get a lot of Allen keys with this um, set up, they've really, I'll give you an indication of all the Allen keys. There are loads of them and spanners. There really is a lot with this kit. There we go. So this also exposes that you've got different grooves, different slots in here where you can um, put the pedals forward and backwards, so that's nice. And our little yellow guy that we saw earlier, you can take that off. Uh, it says you can't hot swap this, so you obviously can't do that while it's powered up. I've opted for the, just the two rumble motors. Uh, I was offered the third one, but I said, like from my past experience, having one on the clutch doesn't add much to your experience. So um, I kind of decided against it. Okay, got that top off. Then this little, like, it looks like a three and a half millimeter headphone jack goes in there. And then let's grab these bolts. I kind of like the red accent of this. Um, I have to admit, I would like that on there as well. Um, the black is cool for sure but because we have the red accents in other places, I'd kind of like to keep them. Um, but we're gonna get a lot from the LED now. So that's an impressive amount of accessories and bells and whistles, but ultimately it still has to perform. Let's get it on the rig and put it to the test. So here we are in the rig, uh, we've got the pedals installed, they do look good. So I've ended up here on this screen and I already started uh, clicking some stuff here. So you can see you can get really cool breathing effect. One of the things that I really like is um, you can see there are two different lights. So there's the one that's underneath um, and there's the one that is behind the Keep Racing logo. They're different but from up here it looks like one is a reflection of the other. Uh, just to Give you a kind of a an idea of that 
uh, if I was to make this a similar orange or whatever color that is, it kind of looks like the two of them are um, the same light source. And uh, maybe if I just change it, it's actually difficult to sync these. So they're kind of, they're almost in sync now. Um, you do have to sync them separately, but now it kind of looks like they're the same. They're actually running at slightly different speeds, I think. Uh, but it looks like they're the same light source right now. But they are two separate light sources. So let's go straight to, I mean, let's go straight to some of the colors that I use. Uh, so I use this and I use like blue. Um, might not work exactly. I'm, I'm not a fan of the, the pulsing either. There is a cycle mode. Um, now cycle does all the colors of the rainbow. So. But it looks like they are in sync. If you go for the cycle mode, you do get that synchronicity. Um, and then there's a pedal follow mode. So press a pedal. Okay, so it, it seems to do it for the seems to do it for the throttle. Not sure if it does it for the other pedals. Maybe the other pedals aren't registering. Don't know. Let's actually just give the pedals a quick feel here. Um, they might need calibration. Let's have a look. Start calibration. So throttle, that is full throttle. Um, and then brake, all angle and load cell. As suspected, there are two inputs there. I wonder why they've got both measuring. Uh, is it for additional accuracy? I don't know. Uh, is it so that you can prioritize distance traveled over the load I, I don't know it's a very very interesting decision by them though and uh, not unusual to see them uh, try innovations like that so let's finish that up and let's see now do the pedals no it's still only reacting to my to my throttle um the clutch is super light when i had it up on the bench there seemed to be like a little bit of a clutch action that is very very light the throttle is not heavy. It's not super light though. Like the La Prima pedals that I had on here were a lot lighter. So that is a heavier pedal, pedal than what I've been using the last few weeks. And the brake. So far, these are the default elastomers. Brake feels pretty good. Uh, I don't really feel, well, there's a hard wall at the very end. Travel is a little bit far there, maybe. I don't know. I'll have to see how that performs in game. But yeah, that, that clutch is almost non existent uh, in its default state. It feels a little bit, I don't know, a little bit broken. Um, it's like it's, uh, if you do it very, very slowly, you can feel that last little bit of engagement. But wearing shoes, yeah, it's almost like there's nothing there. Uh, so that's interesting. Um, pedal bind. Okay. All oh, right, right, right. Okay. So. You can only bind to one pedal, is it? If I okay, bind to the brake. Now we can see the brake there and the throttle here. So okay, that's interesting. But you can't bind to all pedals. That's interesting because you're kind of only really pressing one at a time, right? Uh, I guess with the clutch, it's slightly different. But I don't like the pedal follow thing. Uh, the cycle looks pretty cool. That's actually interesting that the, the red light for the brake is still on there. Even though the brake is not pressed. But we're still registering a little bit of brake. After the tap of my foot. It stopped. Uh, let's just go for single color. And slightly darker. I do like my pink. Uh, and you can control the brightness, of course, as well. You want to turn tone that way down, which is actually nice. I like the I like the nice and bright underneath, um, but the the foot plate slightly less bright. Yeah, that's kind of cool. That looks really nice. Um, yeah, that looks cool. So you can do standard or inverted. Uh, we can also mess with. Okay, that's just the lights feedback. All right. Let's see how this is. Um, vibrate the throttle. Okay. 
a lot of you will be wondering is this a rumble motor like a butt kicker or is it a spinny motor i haven't asked to magic i wanted to see could i see for myself it feels very like a, a proper haptic feedback uh transducer or else they've got some special spinny mechanism going on i don't know if you guys can hear that but that's uh oh you can change the strength oh my god oh my the strength is nuts whoa okay i'm just gonna put that at 50. 50 is already super strong and frequency whoa holy shit i don't know if you <laughs> i don't know if you guys can can you guys hear that that low frequency has a thump to it. Here, listen to this. Can you guys hear that? It is nuts. Wow. Jeez. So the higher frequency rattles less. There's definite noise in them. Oh my god, that is that's nuts. I hope that kind of uh, came through on the on the recording a little bit. Um, when your feet are on them, obviously your foot absorbs a lot of that noise. Well, wow, that's interesting. Uh, I don't see any way to just. It doesn't seem like there's any way for me to change. What? Oh yeah, okay. There's ABS, traction control, and clutch. Okay, so they're the only options I have. I don't have the ability to do like slip. Um, it's only ABS, traction control, and off. And I do know some games don't actually even report traction control. So this is somewhat limited. I'm going to give it a go though. Um, but I have a major, major bit of news for you guys. Um, there is SimHub support as well. Uh, I've been told they haven't announced it yet. There is sim hub compatibility and i'm going to see if i can get that working maybe not in this video but do keep an eye out for it sim hub gives you you know slip you can even position uh you know front wheels back wheels whatever uh so you can use these like you would butt kickers so that is very exciting very very exciting okay let's um go back to the the basic here okay we can see the there's a little bit of lag on the inputs. I hope that lag doesn't exist in game as well. Let me just bring up the, I often test my inputs in Assetto Corsa. Let's just go to the reporting in Assetto Corsa in Content Manager P1000. Yeah, that's in. Okay. So that's all good. But in the software, yeah, if there's a slight delay. Uh, you can do all your different lines your different curves and stuff i usually just go for linear and let's just save this profile um custom tags let's just call it ld save as and you can add it to game categories or whatever cool okay interesting um let's give them a whirl so i'm going for the car and track that i always use but i'm just after thinking that car doesn't have ABS or traction control, so I don't think I'll get any vibration. So let's, it's probably a good test as well uh, to see what the pedals are like without any vibration. Um, and then afterwards, we'll have to get something with traction control and with uh, ABS and something that is like can be driven on the limit with those. Uh, that would be good to see. Okay, let's give this a go here. Bottle feels decent. Registering quite well. Have to be used to these brakes. And this car, because this car is extremely sensitive. I think I feel an occasional tiny bit of rumble. 
Maybe that's just uh, my mind playing tricks on me because I'm not feeling it now. This car doesn't have traction control or ABS. I've got my butt kickers turned off as well, just in case you guys think that I have those still enabled. If I drive on the track. Let's see what the brakes are made of now. This corner, heavy on the braking. And a bit of trail braking. The brake is probably a bit light. The travel is a bit light for me so far. Now, that said, I had the La Prima pedals, the previous pedals that I have had on here. I had them in a very light configuration as well. Um, so, this doesn't feel a million miles away from that. I am, because it's so light, I am struggling a little bit to find that exact point at which I'm, I lock up. Uh, I generally do prefer a, a heavier pedal. Let me get used to this a little bit. Okay, getting a bit more used to it now. So far, I don't see any reasons why I could be every bit as quick with this as with other pedals. My racing lines are not fantastic. Can't blame the pedals for that. Nice modulation of the throttle there. It's registering input well. Uh, nearly lost it there. Did lose it there. Yeah, first impressions, a little bit light. Uh, the throttle's good though. I mean, I, I could definitely, if there was no room for adjustment in the throttle, I'd be okay with it. I do prefer it to be slightly heavier. I've, I've used far lighter throttles as well. Uh, the brake is a little bit squashy for me. I'm finding it a bit difficult to find exactly where to brake. Um, almost like the almost like the i don't know maybe i'm not hitting the load cell is there is there a way to in the software is there a way to not use the oh it's oh it's on i <laughs> that makes sense that makes sense okay so and it makes what i said a little bit more credible as if i it's almost as if i i know what i'm talking about this is set to angle right now Let's set it to load cell, and let's see what happens. Okay, now it's set to measure with the load cell. That, that's why it felt a little bit spongy, I think. Uh, my inputs were a little bit spongy, and it was a little bit hard to, because of course, the major benefit of load cell over a traditional Hall effect sensor is, uh, or, or a potentiometer, is that you're not going off the distance, you're going off the, um, the force that you're putting on the pedal so of course at the end of the day it is it is distance that gets measured okay that's measuring nowhere near as much brake input as it was which is is good so i'm gonna have to slam the pedal a little bit harder now uh yeah that's okay it's, really have to hit it a lot harder than I was doing to get to the end of that load cell. And there's quite a lot of travel. Yeah, the travel is, it's a little bit far away, the travel. Um, so, I wonder... Yeah, I'm, I'm missing all my breaking points. It, 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 I don't know what it is right now, the pedal feels a bit too spongy for me. That could be a me problem. Um, and this is not a long-term review. This is just a short-term review. But so far, it's not super intuitive to use. Uh, I'm not saying I can't be as quick with these pedals as with other pedals. I'm not saying that other pedals have something right and this doesn't. Uh, I'm just not used to it. I think 
the ability is there to you know, find those apexes, do that bit of trail breaking. It's just a little bit spongy. There's not a huge amount of uh, variation in the various, like in the phases of the break. So going just off, if I'm not thinking about the distance, going just off the field, I don't know exactly. Yeah, I don't know exactly how hard I'm braking, if that makes sense. So it kind of feels similar braking at 10% as it does at 80% which is not typically what you have with a load cell pedal. Um, yeah, I don't know if that makes sense to you, but uh, yeah, that's that's how I feel. Let's, um, let's try those rumble motors. Okay, so we know we have traction control. We know we have ABS in this car. So let's see if it automatically slam on the brakes oh yeah we've got abs feeling oh we do you see the way the light flashes watch this well, if i slam the brakes keep an eye on the lighting on the pedals oh <laughs> the vibration is insanely good like the power is just loads of power there oh, this will trigger the traction control so iRacing doesn't report the traction control to the best of my memory but all we're getting is abs here so it's kind of a little bit of a waste without that sim hub compatibility you're only getting abs now is it worth it for the abs yes it is i mean getting one of those motors anyway for the abs alone is definitely worth it i can feel the abs kicking in there it is a massive massive competitive advantage how do i know that because this is not the first product like this that I've used and I can feel there even through that corner I made several adjustments you guys can see it from the flashing which is quite handy uh, for the purposes of what I'm trying to uh, explain here but if I want to keep it out of ABS see I just went slightly into ABS there another very tricky corner coming up here let's try and keep it out of the ABS zone oh just the slightest bit of ABS kicking in and then it would be really nice if we could get the traction control working coming out of the corner you know what i think as iRacing doesn't report it let's go for acc and uh, let's load up acc here all right let's go oh i can feel the traction control immediately and the abs as well All right, I'm sold. If you if if you if you do a ABC mainly a throttle and a brake, rumble motor, and the ABS. Oh my God, this is just this is and it was remarkably easy to set up. To be honest, if you do ACC, it's a complete no-brainer. Oh man, that was, it was so easy to stay out of ABS there. So easy, very intuitive. That was just poor driving for me. I'm used to being in an open wheeler. But you can see the traction control kicking in. You can see it on the dash on screen but like the feeling when, when those rumble motors kick in oh man i'm not used to driving acc at all um, that's a whole other video i think uh, but it, yeah the, the rumble feels really good i've got the rumble for the traction control at a slightly higher frequency than the ABS. The ABS is a lot more of a thump. Oh, forgive, forgive my poor driving here. It would be nice if you got the gear changes. It would be nice if you got the rumble when you go off-road. And uh, maybe even a tiny little bit of rumble um, at, at the... Uh, yeah, maybe even a, a tiny bit of rumble at the higher uh, frequencies. Uh, it seems like right now when these when these rumble motors are on 
they they're just on they're on on um, so they're always on at the same frequency they can't it's like they can't do multiple frequencies I could be wrong about that but uh, AC's or well the semantic software doesn't seem to report those multiple those those different uh, yeah any any real differences you've only got one effect on one rumble motor and another effect on the other uh, but we don't get all the nice things that we get with sim hub as well but i have to admit even just the visual cues are very nice on the pedals i know that i shouldn't be looking at my pedals while driving <laughs> it's very cool it's very, very cool. It's not a gimmick. Um, I know the LEDs might seem like a bit of a gimmick, but if you do ACC and you find yourself not being too clear on when you're in traction control and when you're not, um, yeah, this this will really help. So there will be Sim Hub compatibility for the uh, long term long term review. Uh, they've told me that it's there. It doesn't seem to be super intuitive so i'm not going to waste my time on it today these are my first impressions of the pedals um to recap throttle a little bit light um it's heavier than the la prima that i've been using but it's still a bit light for my liking um i did run it in its default form um but i and then i shifted it down to the the slightly or sorry i shifted it up to the higher peg so i get a little bit more uh feeling in that throttle it feels okay but it's still it's still too light for me uh the brake has a lot of travel very interesting that you can choose between load cell or hall sensor and um, that is yeah very very interesting uh i'm not exactly sure why i would have just gone with the load cell uh, but even with the load cell it's a little bit spongy with these elastomers and uh, the travel is a little bit far um so there are a lot of adjustments that i have to make i love that you can adjust the angle of the pedal faces that's something that i really want to play with the clutch is quite unremarkable uh there there is if you go very very slowly you can feel a clutch engagement at the end uh but there's yeah there's there's very little feel in that um but i do think that they have a lot of potential as a pedal set i hope the elastomers are good uh, i'd love to see if i can make the throttle a little bit stiffer and um, without making it slower I, I like that it is quick it's a it, it, it is quite quick but i did find while braking because the travel is so far um i did find that i found it quite difficult to just remember exactly what phase of the braking i'm at i like to be able to feel just by moving it you know five percent whether i'm at 80 percent or whether i'm at 20 percent. so if i'm already like braking 50 percent, i want to be able to feel how much harder I'm braking. The there seems to be quite little difference between um you know being at 80% or being at 20% when it comes to feel and usually you want it to you want the natural feeling to be like you know light at the start but then all of a sudden it goes like super super high so super hard even though you're still only at 20 or 30% of the uh of the press you want it to be like significantly more stiff uh, than it was. So, well, th that's just me. That's just my opinion, and that's usually how pedals do it. So, uh, I can definitely feel as a com like a quick, brief comparison to the P two thousands. The P two thousand throttle was better. Uh, P two thousand brake also better. That was a hydraulic brake. I don't have the hydraulic mod for uh, this brake, and the P two thousand clutch I didn't like at the start, but uh, when I got it dialed in, I did like it. I, it was decent. It's not the best clutch in sim racing, but it's better than this one. So this one has a massively like rich feature set. These lights are incredible. They're so up my street, it's not even funny. Uh, the electronics are all built into the base plate, so you don't have to do any wiring. You don't even have to plug stuff in underneath. You just, if you get those motors, you just plug them into the top of the base plate absolutely class love that absolutely love that uh, the wires are nice and hidden uh, it, mounting was so easy and you you actually get i thought i was going to use those additional outer brackets but i was able to use the four mounting slots that it comes with and it just yeah like they did they, they've done so much right with this so much 
and anybody coming from uh like a less good pedal set like if you're coming from a set of fanatec v3s for example uh this will be a step up i think i haven't played with the adjustment or anything so don't quote me on that uh from a quality of life from a richness of features and functionality this is an unbelievably complete from the way the uh, lights magnetize and everything just super nice uh one thing i do note that i have the lit up you know keep racing symbol or uh, keep racing footrest there i'd kind of like if some magic was more prominent and the keep racing was less prominent um because my my loyalty i guess when i buy a product like this is more to some magic and less to the keep racing um uh, kind of uh it's like keep racing does that appeal to rally drivers does it appeal to drifters um it's kind of like a yeah it's a slogan it's like a it's like the way nike has just do it i i just i'm not sure um yeah i'm not sure about it uh i would think i'd prefer if it was just a Symagic logo um i love the combination of the lights i think they've just done a a, a savage job they're really nice um and yeah installation was very very painless i I hope that the adjustment is there. That's my main concern right now. I will be using these long term. So uh, this is just a first impressions video, not a review. I know that you're going to look down at the comments and people are going to say, thank you for the review. This is not a review. You can't review a product in the hour or so that I've spent with it now. But gut instinct is gut instinct. And you guys often want to know my gut instinct. Uh, there are lots of things that you will have questions on. Do put those questions in the comments below because it will help me to feed the long-term review which should come in a couple of weeks i'll be using these on all my streams and uh if you have any questions yeah feel free to ask me on a live stream or in discord for now i'm lawrence i'll chat you later